Welcome to Blurb and Diarity. In this video, we will clarify what are pull up and pull down resistors and what they are good for. When talking about pull up and pull down resistors, we normally talk about communication between two devices at least. No matter which type of communication, you normally want to make sure to have a common ground. Besides that, you obviously have some kind of data line and obviously also some kind of power line. So as a minimum for communication, we would have three lines. Yes, sometimes there are specialities where you have only two lines and you emulate the actual communication onto the power supply line, but that's a really special case. So whenever we want to send a signal, and we're talking in this case specifically about digital signals, it will look something like this. We have highs, we have lows, but nothing in between. In case device 1 wants to communicate this specific signal to device 2, it will do the following. It will use an internal digital switch. I will just illustrate this with a normal switch. And device 1 will now connect the data line to the power supply line. So device 2 will now see exactly this level, the high level. The data line is connected to the potential of the power supply line, which is in our case, let's say 3.3 or 5 volts, depending on what device you're on. But now there's the second level, the low level or zero level. To achieve this, device 1 will open the switch and so for cut the connection between data and V+. Therefore, device 2 should see now zero the low level on the data line. I guess sounds quite fine once I explain it. But actually the device 2 will not see the low level because data is now undefined. Once you look at the data line you can see that it's actually floating in space not connected to anything, not connected to any voltage level. So device 2 is not seeing this low level, it's actually seeing something in between. It could be this but it could be also that. The point is that the data level, the signal, is undefined, it's floating. So what we have to do, we have to pull down this voltage level to the low level. To do so, we will connect or introduce a resistor between data and ground, the pull down resistor. So the name makes actually a lot of sense, because this resistor will pull down this logic level to low, to zero, to ground. You could argue that there is a resistor in between data and ground and so far it's not exactly at ground. But as long as data is not connected to anything else, but as long as data is not connected to anything else, it's actually on the same voltage level as ground. You could argue as well that we should connect ground and data directly. But be careful with that because what you're basically doing is you're connecting directly data to ground, which is a shortcut. So this would work okay as long as the switch is open, but as soon as you close the switch again, you're basically shortcutting V plus directly to ground, which will obviously destroy your pins on your device one as well as on your device two. So you wanna make sure that your pull down resistor is not zero, but also not incredibly big. What you normally see is something like 10K, 10,000 ohms, could be also down to 1,000 ohms. There are different reasons and requirements why you want to choose your pull down resistor at, on a certain level, but this is something for an advanced video. So this is the pull down resistor, why you need it and how you roughly size it. But obviously if there's a pull down, there's also a pull up resistor. So we have a similar setup, but in this case we have our signal, which is going to be introduced between data and ground with a switch between data and ground. So by default, we are connected to ground, which would be our low signal here at the beginning. This is clear. And if we want to have a high signal, we will open the switch. So to signal the high level to device two. But again, just because we are not longer connected to ground doesn't mean that we are exactly on low. This is again an undefined state. Data is now again free floating in space. So what we want to do, we want to introduce a resistor between data and V plus between data and our voltage high level, which will now pull up data to V plus. And in case the switch is closed, it doesn't hurt. We have no direct connection between V plus and ground because our resistor, our pull up resistor is in between. Again, around 10K would be a default value, which will make sure that you have no shortcut, no energy losses, no current losses between V plus and ground, just because your communication is going on. That's roughly what you want to do. By the way, in case you're working on an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi 
or roughly all established microcomputers or microcontrollers, you have integrated pull up and pull down resistors. So within your Arduino, within your Raspberry Pi, there are on board already tiny resistors ready for you to use. So whenever you have a communication going on, let's say I2C, your microcontroller or microcomputer is automatically using the right pull up or pull down resistor depending on the communication protocol to make sure you have proper communication. That's by the way the reason why you have natural I2C or SPI pins on your Raspberry Pi or Arduino because those pins are dedicated to this specific communication protocol and have the right pull up and pull down resistors in place. Obviously there are other reasons around, but this is one of them. What you can always do with your Raspberry Pi in case you need several I2C buses, you can emulate I2C on a so-called virtual pin. So you can choose any GPIO pin and emulate I2C on this pin. But in this case, you need to make sure to have external pull up or pull down resistors established depending on which communication protocol you're talking about, if it's I2C, SPI or whatever. On some boards you also have the possibility to enable pull down or pull up resistors within your software, which is obviously quite convenient. Anyway, this is it. You learned what is a pull up and pull down resistor. You learned how to use them, when you need them and why you need them. I hope you liked it and please make sure to subscribe to the channel to make sure to learn more about electronics and IoT. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time.